Really nice looking fish. Wow, that's a trophy. That's a hog! Woo! Nice job, you two. There we go. Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. It's all about finding and catching blue catfish in reservoirs. Blues are often associated with big rivers like the Missouri, Mississippi, and the Ohio. But across many of the mid plain states, fishery managers have stocked blue cats in reservoirs that have an abundance of forage, like shad or skipjack herring. With lots to feed on, blue catfish can grow big fast giving anglers the opportunity to catch large fish without the intimidation of big flowing water. And best of all, the peak bite for Reservoir Blues happens in early spring. So one could just dust off those winter blues <laughs> Good. with some hot blue cat action. There we go. There we go. Nice Kansas blue. Beautiful fish, congratulations. You know, fishing in these conditions can be tough, but if you bear down and you fish hard, you can catch a big blue just like this one. Hey, John Jameson here. Uh, heading out today with my fellow Lund Pro staffer and good friend Marty Gerloff. Going to fish a East Central Kansas Reservoir for late March uh, blue cats. Hopefully catch a couple big ones. We're going to do our best to do that. You know, we th this reservoir, uh, you know, it was stocked with blues about 10 years ago, roughly. So we got a really strong population of, of young fish coming on. And the reason we're fishing in shallow water like we are is this early spring bite, these fish and the shad, they move up in that shallow water. As we get a little bit of sunshine during the day, that water temp can jump five, six, eight degrees during the daytime and uh, the shad move up there because the water temperature is warmer and the blues follow right behind them. It's, it can be an awesome bite. Hopefully we see some sunshine. Yep, I'm, if I'm not, hoping I mean, so. We'll just go down eight to 10 feet possibly and we may have to find them there. But that's part of what fishing is, is just going out and adapting to the current conditions. Absolutely. And you know, the, the big thing about fishing the way we are today it is some of the simplest, easiest type of fishing that we do all year. Absolutely. You know, this, this lake fishing, we go out, and anybody can do it. You know, you know we're, we're going to go out there and drop the anchor and drop the talon down and just scatter the baits around, around the boat and wait to see what happens. Yeah, and I'll have to pull the anchor up at most 8 to 10 feet, so. And I don't clean the anchor off. I just throw it in the boat, right? With well, this idea. With the mud. Get as much mud in the bottom <laughs> of the boat as you possibly well, can. Well, we're fishing out of your line, so. Yeah. Water temp today is 48 degrees. It'd be ideal if we could get up into the 50s. But I think we'll go out here. What we want to do is we got this on side scan and we're just looking for scattered concentrations of fish. So right. all these little white marks we're seeing, that's Absolutely. fish. So uh, we want to just find the highest concentration we can. We'll see what we got. You know, and again, we're fishing in that five to 10 foot of water. Right. You know, and later today, we'll probably be fishing in two. So we're kind of rolling off of that seven foot. Yep, there's that rocky ledge fish. You see those fish hanging Absolutely. right there. So we go from seven to 13 feet of water, basically. Yep. Not a lot of fish there, but there's a good one right a there. Good fish. Right there's a good fish. You want to set up and fish right here yeah, for a minute? Yeah, absolutely. Not a whole lot of fish, but let's give it a shot. We got the bait and a few scattered fish. 
biggest thing on this is just to keep that point of that hook exposed like that. So when a fish comes in and bites, you get hooked into the fish immediately. Scatter them out. Yep. Fan cast them out. So you know, Marty, I noticed you put on one whole shad today. Yep. And it's always important to use different size baits to try to get a feel for what these fish want to fish for. So, you know, like I said, Marty's fishing a whole six to eight inch shad. We've got tut bait, we've even got fillets, we've got heads. So just try a variety and the fish will kind of tell you what they want. There's a pretty decent fish coming in and pulled it down really good there, Marty. It's good. I'm getting on them. Yep. Maybe our bite's going to pick up here a little bit. So. Nice healthy little fish. Yep. Good job. <sighs> Nice little blue cat here today. Uh, struggled a little bit this morning trying to get on these fish. You know, normally we're catching them in two to four or five feet of water. It's a lot colder today, so we uh, slid out a little bit deeper, caught this fish in 17 feet of water a little bit ago. And uh, you know, that's what you gotta do. Just kinda keep moving around, trying to find where the fish are. And you know, later today, we'll, we'll be back into that two to five feet of water. But for now, we're gonna stick to this deeper water. The start of each fishing day requires figuring out what's happening below the surface. Sonar technologies like side and down imaging, coupled with accurate mapping, take the guesswork out of fish location. When you finally find the sweet spot, exact boat positioning allows you to make repeated and well-placed casts without getting on top of the fish. The One Boat Network from Minn Kota and Hummingbird share data. Find the fish using your fish finder, then pin the boat in place using Minn Kota's GPS-enabled spot lock on the bow, or depending on the depth and situation, talent shallow water anchors off the transom. These boat control tools can be controlled from your phone or fish finder over a Bluetooth network, hand remote, or from the equipment themselves. Paddle tail swim baits like the innovative Mega Bass Dark Sleeper let you comb mixed cover areas for bass without snagging while delivering excellent hookup ratios. Quality Dark Sleeper Bass. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. So one of the things we do when we get this bigger bait like this, these big shad, a lot of times these fish will will bite really well on the, the gut pocket out of these shad. So we take these larger shad and we'll cut straight down to the backbone. When we get to the backbone, we wanna turn the knife blade and run it straight toward his gills. When you get to that point, you just wanna kinda of roll this open, open this uh, gut pocket up and we'll just roll that whole piece of gut out. That is catfish candy. They love it. We marked some nice fish here, so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Definitely have. Sure. Hopefully get that big fish on it. Yeah, there's been a fish on this. I've never found my weight. He may no, still he, be there. I think he's swimming. Yeah. He he's, was swimming towards you. Yeah, it? he's, he I've hit never it. caught up He hit him. it once and then he, he started swimming towards the boat. Sometimes he's lake fish. -al. Yeah. Bring it right to the boat. Yeah, past it now. There he is. There he is. There he is. Yep. Swam right at the boat. You know, that's the thing about these uh, lake fish. They don't always go away from you. And sometimes you got to kind of reel into the fish because they'll. Uh, it's a better fish. Oh, too. yeah. A little bit better oh, fish. Yeah. A little bit better fish. Yep. Staying down good anyway. Yeah, he's staying nice down good. Nice little fight. Yeah. Just always take your time, keep your drag set. So if that fish wants to make a run, he can. Another nice uh, little blue cat here. You know, it's very important to keep moving around and we use our side scan on these units to our advantage. So. We've done a lot of driving around today until we started marking a lot of fish. And uh, this has been the, the best spot we found so far today. And these two fish have came just boom, boom within 
15 seconds of one another. And that's yep. the way it can be on these lakes once you get dialed in and, and zero in on these fish. You know, one thing, uh, going back just a few years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, we did not have blue cats in these area lakes in East Central Kansas. The state is king, came along and, and stocked blues in seven or eight of these different area lakes, which provides a good opportunity for all the local anglers because these are fast growing fish and, you know, soon we're gonna be seeing a lot of fish in the 40, 50, 60 pound range and they're gonna be trophy fisheries. And it, they do change the dynamics of these lakes. We used to catch a lot of big channel cat. And when these blues really start taking hold, the channel population kind of slides off and the blues will be the dominant species in, in the reservoir. But it's gonna be a great resource for many generations to come. Healthy fish. Nice little blue, look at that. Healthy fish. Ate it right down there. Me and John are using several different rigs. The one common denominator is our modified circle hooks. We're using ripping lips, and now I'm gonna show you what we're using. Basic three-way rig with a modified ADOT rip and lip circle hook. Three foot leader on, on the hook. What I'm using today is a 50 pound big game on the leader. And then I have a six inch dropper for my weight. Um, some variations we do to this rig is sometimes I'll tie a double hook rig. I'll put another hook up here six inches ahead above it and then also I'll put a float in here to float this up off the bottom whether we're dragging or or even uh, spot locking or anchor fishing it just pulls that bait up off the bottom bottom gives a little action the blue cat really like it up off the bottom sometimes typically when we tie our rigs we will uh, tie it with a snell knot we'll run this line in on the hook side that a way to roll it into the fish and that gives you a, a deeper hook set whenever that fish bites it'll roll it into its lip deeper and give a, a better hook set and you don't have as many fish get off and uh, better hookups. Talk a little bit about the rods some of the equipment we're using today this is a uh, eight foot uh, rod designed by uh, the rod shop really fast quick tip on it it turns into a heavy backbone that allows that fish, as he picks up that bait and rolls away from you, it'll turn that hook and set it right in his, right in his jaw very quickly. We're using an 80 pound braid, and you can, any reel that's about a 6,500 to 7,000 uh, range size works well for these blue cats. There he is. Yeah. Give him up out of that camera. That's what I'm doing. So today's been a little bit different than, than a lot of our trips. You know, we keep, we're, we're moving a lot today because we got little fronts and stuff coming through. And when we find a group of fish and we're, we're getting set up on them, most of our bites, most of the fish we're catching is within that first five to 10 minutes. Then it goes dead. So that's telling us we're ca catching a few active fish out of that group of fish and then it goes dead. Then we got to move again, find another group of fish. Let's catch another one. <clears throat> You know, uh, a good friend of mine was out here fishing just a week ago and he was catching all of his fish in, in four to 10 feet of water. We come out here today and all of our fish is coming in 16 to 17 feet of water. So, you know, that shows us as the weather conditions change, it's a lot cooler today, these little fronts coming through. You gotta shift and find where these fish are. And it's just a matter of staying on the fish. You know, I've been tournament catfishing for somewhere around 20 years now. And when I first started out, the sport was young and, and not that popular, but it has really grown and it's one of the fastest growing freshwater sports uh, in the world today. And uh, I really like fishing for these tournaments because it keeps you on your game. You learn a lot of new stuff, you know, over the years, We've, we've learned how to you know, anchor fish, how to walk bait, how to, to drift, how to drag. You know, to stay on top of things, you gotta keep coming up with techniques. new techniques all the time. And that's kind of what, it, what it's about. Yeah, we've just learned so much going to Alabama, to Texas, fishing rivers all over the country. I mean, yep. you just learn new techniques from other people and, and 
it makes us better fishermen in our home waters too because we try new stuff. To be a cat fisherman, you can still be the guy that goes and sits on the bank and catches nice stringers of fish. Right. But if you want to take it to another level, you can get involved in the tournaments and you know and, and stay up on all your electronics and all that stuff. So you can catch fish however you want to do it, just whatever level you want to take it to. Absolutely. Let's run out here and set up on another group of fish. While we're moving, uh, I've been in a pro guide now for about five years. Love the boat, very versatile, the most maneuverable boat I've ever fished out of, uh, coupled with a Mercury Big Tiller. This happens to be a 200. It's got power steering on it. So with just one or two fingers, you can take this motor and turn it anywhere you want with ease. It's got a RPM limiter, so when we're fishing, uh, in a situation where we want to slow that motor down, we'll slow that motor down with this RPM limiter. Uh, it's also got the horsepower to take me to the other end of the lake in just a heartbeat. We're gonna drag just to cover a little bit of water. Just we haven't tried that. And one of the ways we do that is with a planer board. Right quick, I'll go through my rig here Got a sinker slide, and we're fishing shallow water, so I just got a one ounce sinker under that. With the clip, we, I come into about a 36 inch leader, comes to another snap, and this is the actual leader that goes to my bait. Got a cork in here to help it float it up. So to really get this in, just to show everybody, we get our bait in the water. <clears throat> Feed that out. We got the trolling motor running, so we're actually feeding line out, getting it away from the, the boat a little bit. And very simply, we take our planer board. There's a little uh, pin on the bottom. We just pin this line in there. We have a clip here. Clip the line. And then simply drop the planer board in and a lot of times to get it started good we'll speed the boat up just a, a hair and then as we engage the reel into gear you see how it's uh, pulling that board out to the side and what this allows us to do it allows us again to cover a lot of water so it really kicks this spread out on this boat. So instead of just fishing directly behind the boat, we're covering, you know, a 40 foot swath and uh, catching fish. Awesome way to fish. And we want to ideally stay between 0.3 and 0.6 miles an hour. It's a great speed to move and you catch a lot of fish at that speed. Well, today I'm, I'm fishing out of my uh, Lund Pro Guide. Really like fishing out of this boat for the style of fishing we do because it's open. It's easy to move around in and we do a lot of fan casting when we're uh, anchored so we're not bothered by a windshield. I've also uh, put a uh, jack plate on my motor because a lot of times we're fishing in shallow water and uh, that allows me to raise this water, this motor up. I can get in shallower, shallower waters and as you can see now we're dragging baits. I've got an Altera on front. We just drop that down and just slowly drag these baits. So. We fish a lot of uh, longer rods for uh, these, these big blues. We got storage along the side here where we can take uh, very long rods. I can put everything up. We got center rod locker storage, put everything in there. And we got so much storage in this boat. You know, all of our cutting boards, our rod holders and, and everything at the end of the day, we're able to stow it away, lock it up. This, as you can see, this Lund Pro Guide does everything that I need it to do for the style of fishing that I do. I think you got hook into him. I yep. got hook into him. Good finally. deal. Sitting there chewing on it and yep. just had to force it. As you may have noticed, a lot of these blues are really kind of short and stocky fish. These blues are, they can be eating machines. You get that big belly on them, they're feeding on uh, the shad populations in these lakes. And one thing the fisheries biologists have documented 
When these blues get to be about 20 pounds, they really become eating machines. So they eat a lot and that's how they pack on the weight and that fish can get to 50, 60, 70 pounds pretty quickly. Channel cat on the, the other hand are slower growing. They don't get as big as the blues. One thing we have noticed when the blues get a good hold on a reservoir, uh, the channel cat population kind of slides down. And just a quick note about flatheads, which are, are very common in these waters. They're, uh, they'll get big, a lot of 40, 50, 60 pound fish. They primarily feed on uh, live bait. You have anything to add to that, Marty? Some of the flatheads, they'll be up roaming, ranging shallow water, chasing little active fish up there, more like yeah. a bat. You know, the channel cat, they'll go up and eat worms that are coming off the bank or, or yep. bugs or just anything they find. And they, they're kind of in the trees and in the brush sometimes yep. too, like a flathead. And these blues, they're really active fish. They'll travel a long ways. They want to follow them ledges. And that's the way they kind of ambush some of this uh, shad that's out here. And these fish today are really tight to that rock bluff. So you can see the shoreline there, that's all rock. That's what we're fishing, but it's underwater. And these fish are relating right to that rock structure. Sometimes you gotta get really specific on, uh, on where you're fishing, because these fish will relate to that kind of structure. And again, that rock bluff, they are super, super tight to it today. So really all we're doing here is we're driving uh, up the, the river here. This is the old channel and there's a rock bluff right here. And these fish are in that channel. All of our fish have been coming right along that rock, rock bluff today. Loading it up, we're going sideways. Oh, he let go of it. There he goes. That's a better fish, boy. Good. I think. A little bit bigger fish there, ain't it, Marty? I think so. I'm gonna pull this pole out of the way. Yeah, he's staying down better. Yep. A little nicer fish. A little nicer fish, finally. Oh, yeah. Getting some white water there from him. Yep. When you get him ready, Marty, I'll slide back there and net him. Okay, go ahead and. Yeah, that's a decent fish. There we go. There we go. Nice Kansas blue. Nice Kansas blue. Yep. Beautiful fish. Congratulations. You know, fishing in these conditions can be tough, but if you bear down and you fish hard, you can catch a big blue just like this one. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.